And the reality is that what we were comparing there, we'll say a decline in retail sales, is seasonally adjusted sales in January compared to seasonally adjusted in December. And I promise you the seasonal adjustment is more than the difference they're talking about. If you look at year over year sales from last January to this January, they were actually up. And beyond that, it's a very uh, sort of messy time of the year. It's a little bit like thinking about uh, the preseason of football or practice squad yeah. compared to real retail sales. Some season. of the retail sales is gasoline, right? I mean, that's included sure. in, the federal, sure. in the federal numbers, and gasoline prices are higher right. today than they were a year ago. And now there is talk, possibly, of a 25 cent a gallon yep. federal hike to the federal gasoline tax. It doesn't take much of a genius for me to think that that comes right out of the pockets of people who would be otherwise spending money at stores. Is, is that something that retailers would worry about, number one, and what the government giveth with one hand in the form of a tax cut, they may be taking away with the other in the form well, of a I, gas I tax hike. Gas prices are still pretty low by historic standards, and if you take a look at the you know, burden in terms of how much people spend on gasoline on an inflation-adjusted basis, it's really pretty low. It's declined pretty sharply over the last few decades. And we thought we'd get even a, a much stronger sort of windfall as energy prices declined, but we saw it retail. So there's clearly some cross elasticity, and it's clear that, it, that gas is a necessity, and you're gonna spend on that first, and you're gonna spend it on the rest. But it doesn't really add up to that much at the end of the day for each individual consumer. So I'm not too worried about it at that magnitude. And that proposal, by the way, has been around since, uh, right. you know, since I was a child, I think. <laughs> so we'll see. But you seem dismissive of the worries and the declines in retail sales from the last numbers. And I wow. ask because people saw that in conjunction with the inflation numbers and thought, oh, my I gosh, are we getting inflation and a weakening consumer? Yeah, at this point, I think it's a bunch of poppycock. We came out of one of the strongest holiday Holidays seasons incredibly strong. in many, many years. There are many reasons to expect there'll be inflation, but they're all good reasons. It's because the economy's strong, unemployment is low, people are going to be getting tax breaks, there'll be more spending on infrastructure. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind the economy is going to be supercharged by these events. That could lead to some inflation. But as a retailer, inflation is actually good for you as long as it's moderate. And I say that because what happens is you get an increase in your prices pretty rapidly, right? And you can pass that along to the customer pretty fast. But your factor costs are sticky upwards, so like your wage rates, and most particularly the rent that you pay is very sticky because you tend to, that tends to adjust on five or 10 year increments. It takes a long time before it comes back. So in a, in a period of moderate inflation, retailers actually do better. And a heavily indebted retailer would like some inflation as well, right? Because it gets that much easier to pay back your debts. It, it's, you know, that's, that's all good. And meanwhile, you know, there are many deflationary factors that continue the economy that lead me to believe it's really not going to get out of control in the near term. So, for example, you know, you have a globalization. So, so much product is shifting to manufacturing offshore, and that's tend to lower the price and keep it down. We were talking a little bit earlier how apparel prices have been deflationary for years and years and years. We saw a little tiny uptick in that, but it's still deflationary as that, that moves around the globe like a, like, like kind of like a circus. Uh, the same automation and uh, artificial intelligence is taking over many office jobs even, where it's being done, being done uh, you know, by, by essentially robots or programs doing the work people used to do. Uh, digitization in the, in the workplace is driving costs down. So, and then so did you e just laugh when the market sold off because of inflation fears? Because you sound so dismissive uh, of it. Well, at that level, I think it's ridiculous. That's right. The, the real debate is nothing to do with any of this. It's whether over the long term we're mortgaging the far out future, you know, our children's future uh, for today's success. But with this level of stimulus in the economy as a retailer over the next, next year or two, I guess I have almost no doubt that it's going to be sort of happy days are here again. Are, are we going to be an consumer. experiential um, spending society for forever? Is that yeah, just that's the way a permanent it's going to be? Shift. I don't have any doubt there's a permanent shift. And there's some things that are very expensive that are experiential, sort of like your smartphone, which is a big increase. And, and that, that all counts in retail sales, but it certainly goes away from the economy of things into buying experiences, hotels, you heard, we heard earlier, the travel business is up. Uh, people love, love those. So, so there definitely has been a shift that's taking place. And I would expect that to continue uh, for, the, for the, the long term. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.